So in calculus, we are interested in rates of change. How does one quantity change relative to another quantity? We already started to see this when we looked at, in section 2.1, the tangent line and the velocity problem. We were interested in how one quantity changes relative to another one. So now we're just going to look at rates of change for general functions, in particular the average rate of change of an arbitrary function. So the average rate of change of a function f over the interval x1 to x2 is defined as f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. If we just quickly draw a sketch of this, what this means is, so we've got a function, let's say it looks something like this, and here is x1, and here is x2, so this is y equals f of x. So we've got these points. And what are the heights of these points? So I'll continue this axis a bit. So this is f of x2. This is f of x1. And what does this ratio represent? Well, x, f of x2 minus f of x1 is this height here. And x2 minus x1 is this distance here. It's x2 minus x1. So what this ratio represents is the slope of the line through those two points. So slope is equal to f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. So we can interpret this average rate of change as the slope of the secant line through the two points. Okay, so that's what the average rate of change is. The average rate of change of this function over the interval is defined to be the slope of the secant line through the two points at the end of the interval. So let's go ahead and work out an example. So we have a cylindrical tank. It holds 100,000 gallons of water which can be drained from the bottom of the tank in an hour. So then Torricelli's law gives us that the volume of water remaining in the tank after t minutes is given by this formula here. The volume is 100,000 times 1 minus t over 60 squared. So let's just see if this very briefly makes sense. So how much water is in the tank at time zero? Well, there should be 100,000 gallons of water. So let's plug zero into our expression and make sure we get 100,000. So zero in for t, this becomes one, one squared is one, so yep, it's 100,000. What about an hour later? So it says it's drained from the tank in an hour. So 60 minutes later, if I plug that in, I should get zero, and I see that I get zero. So at least this agrees with the two endpoints. And so this is the function that actually gives us the volume at any given time as well. So we want to find the average rate of change at which the water is flowing out of the tank between 0 and 10 minutes, and then between 40 and 50 minutes, and then find the average rate over the entire 60 minute period. So what is our average rate of change? Well from 0 to 10, that would be v of 10 minus v of 0 all over 10 minus 0. So let's just skip back up to the top here. We're just applying this average rate of change formula here. It's the function value at x2 minus the function value at x1. Here, we're not using the variable x, but we're using time, so it would be the volume at time 2 minus the volume at time 1. That's what I put on top, and then time 2 minus time 1. And that's what I put on the bottom. So let's go ahead and work that out. So this is 100,000 times 1 minus 10 over 60 squared minus 100,000 times 1 minus 0 over 60 squared, and all of that is over 10. So this is 1 6, 1 minus 1 6, so that's 5 6, so that's 100,000, and then we've got 5 6 all squared, minus, and then I factored out that 100,000 up front again, and I get 1 there, so that's minus 1, and all of that's over 10. So this becomes then 10,000 
times 2536 minus 3636 or negative 1136 which simplifies down to 27,500 all over 9 or approximately negative 3,055.56 gallons per minute. So right at the start, over that first 10 seconds, our average rate of change is roughly 3,000 gallons per minute. So it's decreasing in volume, decreasing in volume because it's negative, by roughly 3,000 gallons per minute. What about over the next, or sorry, over the last 10 minutes from V50, from 40 to 50. So V50 minus V40 all over 50 minus 40. So again, we plug those numbers all in and we get that it's 100,000 divided by 10. Okay, so that would be 10,000. So I can write 10,000 out front. And we get 1 minus 5 6 all squared minus 1 minus 4 6 all squared. Notice it would have been 50 over 60 and 40 over 60, but I just noticed a common factor of 10 in each, so I reduced it to 5 6 and 4 6. And this is roughly negative 833.34 gallons per minute. So over the last 10 minutes, we're losing about 800 gallons every minute. Okay. So we already see something interesting just with these values alone. We see that over the first 10 minutes, roughly every minute we're losing about 3,000 gallons. But over the last 10 minutes, roughly every minute we're losing about 800. So it seems to be draining much more quickly at the beginning than it is at the end. What is the average rate of change of the water flowing out of the tank over the entire 60 minute interval? So that would be V60 minus V0 all over 60 minus 0. And so we would plug the values in and this would be V of 60, the volume at 60 is 100,000, the volume at 0 is 0, and so that's over 60, which is approximately negative 1,666.67 gallons per minute. Okay, so let's use this information that we just calculated about average rates of change and see what it tells us about the volume function. So the volume function is going to start with a value of 100,000. After 60 minutes, it's going to end up with a value of zero. So it's got to go from this point to this point. And we see from our first calculation that it's going to be dropping rapidly to start with but then near the end, it's not going to be dropping rapidly at all. So it drops rapidly to begin with, and then it doesn't drop so rapidly near the end of its life. So it looks something like this. What does this last calculation tell us? Well, this last calculation says that the average rate of change over the 60 minute interval is negative this. 1,666. So that means that instead, if we let the 100,000 gallons drain out of the tank at a constant rate, so that the function was a linear function, then the slope of that linear function is negative 1,666.67. That's what the average rate of change over the 60 minute interval means. It means that the slope of the line connecting the two endpoints is that average rate of change. And so a way to interpret this is, in this problem, is that imagine that we, you know, maybe stick a little valve on the bottom of the tank so that it has to drain at a constant rate. We control the flow out and the flow is going to be constant. Then this is what the flow would have to be out over the entire 60 minute interval if we control it to be a constant flow rate, so that 100,000 gallons drained in the 60 minute interval. All right, so this was just an illustration of what the average rate of change of a function is over an interval. It's just the change in the function value over the change in the input. 
In calculus, we are interested in instantaneous rates of change, but we get at them through average rates of change. So I wanted to make sure we just had an understanding of what an average rate of change is first, because in the next few lectures we're going to start to talk about instantaneous rates of change and using the average rate of change to get it. Okay, so that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.